Hi, it's Kip K for Make Magazine. In our energy conscious day and age, there's a lot of talk about alternative fuel sources. In fact, about 150 years ago, the idea of using vegetable oil as a fuel was invented. Now, biodiesel is a non petroleum based diesel fuel consisting of short chain alkyl esters made by, and this is a big word, transesterification of vegetable oil, which can be used alone or blended with conventional petrodiesel in unmodified diesel engine vehicles. So join me as we make some homemade biodiesel on today's weekend project. You'll find the biodiesel project in Make Volume 3 and it's on page 68. But before we get started, keep in mind that while biodiesel is safe to handle and store, the home brewing process that we're about to do involves flammable, poisonous, and caustic chemicals, alcohols, and lye. Sounds fun, doesn't it? So wear your safety glasses and nitrile gloves with plenty of ventilation. All right, let's get started. There are a number of materials and supplies you'll need to make your own biodiesel. Uh, we won't describe each and every one, but we will as we go through the process of making it. Our first and most dangerous ingredient is 100% lye that can be found in drain opener, and that's sodium hydroxide, and we're going to measure out about 5 grams, and carefully add that to a standard mason jar. Our next ingredient is methanol, which can be found in the name brand Heat, which is available in most auto parts stores. Measure out 220 milliliters of the heat. Then carefully add the heat to the lye. Seal the top tightly and begin swirling it until the lye is dissolved. And this mixture is our meth oxide solution, which is very dangerous, so be careful. I'll be using brand new vegetable oil, which is cholesterol free, by the way, and we'll measure out one liter of oil, and we need to heat it up. So we'll get our little stove, pour our oil in a pot, add our thermometer, and heat it up to about 130 degrees. Carefully add the hot oil to a 2 liter glass or plastic bottle. Then pour in the meth oxide solution, seal the top, and begin shaking. You have to shake pretty hard for about 5 minutes. Set this mixture aside, and in about a half hour or so, you'll see some color change take place. And you should start to see a darker layer at the bottom. This is our glycerin, and our biodiesel is the lighter color on the top. Now you need to let this mixture sit overnight, and the next day you'll see a dramatic change in the color. Now it's time to pour the biodiesel layer off the top into another bottle, and we don't want to pour any of the glycerin in there, just the biodiesel. Okay, it's time to wash and dry the biodiesel. And this is done by adding some warm distilled water to our biodiesel and slowly mixing the two together. The idea here is to separate the soap that's naturally in the biodiesel from the biodiesel fuel. Once you see a little bit of the white soapiness begin to form, it's time to flip the bottle over carefully and slowly drain out the soap. You may have to repeat this procedure two or three times or maybe even more to thoroughly clean your biodiesel. Then it's time to let it sit and dry in open air. Okay, we've let our new batch of biodiesel sit for a few hours, but it really needs a couple of days to completely evaporate, and then it'll be ready to put in a diesel engine. And you might want to filter it through some coffee filters just to remove any small micro abrasives that may still be present. But generally, it's going to work just fine in small quantities. Well, there's how to cook your very own homemade biodiesel, and we'll see you next time with another weekend project. Thank you.